Dear friends, welcome to this question-answer series presented by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. Dr. Philip has spent his whole life answering young and old on an unbelievably wide range of subjects. His ultimate aim is to help you to find answers to your questions and even doubts. In turn this will help you in multiple ways. Dr. Philip keeps posting question answers regularly. Many of these can be very helpful to you. Do not miss any of them. Please subscribe to our channel and you will get notice of each and every video as it is posted. It is easy to subscribe. Below this video you will see a subscribe icon. Please click it. Please also click to bell icon there to confirm your subscription. That is all. You will never miss any of these life transforming videos. God bless you. We have been studying the subject of justification by faith and in last two weeks I have made it very clear that justification is a vital doctrine for Christians. Why is it so vital? Why is it so important? Because of a number of reasons and today I would like to share why this doctrine is so important. I also want to remind you, my dear brothers and sisters, many people think that doctrines are very dry subjects. A lot of people, when we say that, listen, we want to, we need to study such and such fundamental doctrine, they immediately say, hey, a doctrine, it's very boring. If common believers, say that doctrine is boring, the responsibility for that belongs to people like me and you, many of you who teach but who do not teach doctrines properly. Many of us tend to teach Bible doctrines as though we are just reading a grocery list. That's not the way to teach Bible doctrines. That way, even a Hindu can teach. I know a number of Hindus who read the Bible regularly and you ask them about any subject and, well, they will give you all the facts and data and everything related to doctrine. But as I said, that is exactly like reading a catalog. That is not the way doctrine is to be taught. When doctrine is taught, the practical implications must also be taught. And here, I want to start with an apology. The first doctrine we covered in Brethren Theological in BTI English was the doctrine of Trinity. I explained Trinity in a very simple manner, but I overlooked to introduce the practical aspects of Trinity. It came to my mind when somebody asked me, okay, brother, that was a very simple presentation. And uh, we enjoyed hearing Trinity presented in such an easy and understandable manner. But what is it to me? Hey, I said, uh, that was a mistake on my part. I made the doctrine simple but forgot to present the practical aspects. And uh, let me apologize to you for not presenting the practical aspects of Trinity. Please give me some time and I will come to the practical aspects of Trinity. Presenting a subject in a classroom teaching like this requires preparation. So I will prepare from the scripture and then I will come back to Trinity and I will present the practical aspects of Trinity. Okay, you may say that's fine, but what about the practical aspects of justification by faith? Yes, that is exactly what I would like to present today. In this class, I had uh, mentioned that Romans chapter 5 verse 1 is a key verse to understand doctrine of trinity a doctrine of justification therefore being justified by faith we have 
peace with god king james version says peace with god uh, 500 years or 550 years ago when king james bible was translated peace had a different meaning in today's language the translation would be since we have been justified by faith we have access unto god please remember the higher the rank of a person the more difficult it is to reach that person in india the person of the highest rank is the prime minister and president you cannot simply walk into their office and say hey, hi hello no you have to go through a chain of applications and chain of examination before you can meet them forget the president or prime minister of india even the headmaster of a school you need permission before you enter his room if that is the situation with human beings then remember access access means ability to go and meet a person pahunch in hindi the correct word is pahunch to get access to god is to get access to the most highly elevated person in this universe the creator of mankind and romans chapter 5 verse 1 makes it very clear that you and i we have access to the very creator of the universe because we are justified by faith that is the one practical implication to understand why we have access to god because of justification let me remind you the story narrated by lord jesus where a very rich man prepared a feast and once he prepared a feast he invited and guests were not coming those who were invited were not coming so he said he told the servants he ordered rather he ordered the servants go to the streets pick up anybody and everybody whom you see on the streets and bring them to the house so that they may enjoy feast with me so all these people went servants went picked up people from streets but as we know people in streets they are not ready for a feast so as these people who were picked up from streets that would include people of high status that would also include laborers and that would also include beggars when they were brought to the house of the feast each one was given a coat a tunic with which to cover themselves so that their poor and low position in society is not betrayed once they wore that expensive tunic they look like anyone that's a reason called schools have uniforms so that the rich may not show their riches through their clothes and so that the poor may not be embarrassed by their poor clothing that's why all schools or almost all schools have uniforms so lord jesus said when the rich man invited people when everyone came then lord did not mention the details but from cultural studies it becomes clear to us that when people came for a banquet before they entered the hall the slaves gave them clothing so that they might cover themselves with appropriate clothing and then enter the rich man's feast and when the rich man came he said hello to everyone and suddenly found one man who was not wearing cloth appropriate and when the rich man asked my dear friend what about your clothing which is needed which you have to wear before you have access to this feast he was speechless he did not say 
master i don't have clothes no he could not have said that he could not have mentioned it as an excuse because these expensive clothes were provided at the door so that wearing them they become ready to attend the rich man's feast when we go and attend an occasion our clothing has to be when we go and attend a feast our clothing has to be according to the occasion in the same way when we go to meet god we are forgiven sinners but that's not sufficient that's not sufficient that's why god justifies us covers us with the righteousness of christ and today when a believer goes into the presence of god he goes there as a person covered in the righteousness of christ and that is the reason why or that provides us access to god that's the meaning of romans chapter 5 verse 1 we are covered with the righteousness of christ and that is why we have access or that gives us access to god coming back to implications of justification by faith let me tell you that when we listen how huh, okay we were justified uh, what is what exactly is the practical consequence suddenly it doesn't come to our mind but i want to remind you once again god gave us a new identity and that new identity has given us access to the very creator of the universe i want to illustrate that with an example when we are given a new status that new status brings a lot of new privileges when we were justified by faith that act of justification becoming righteous in front of god has given us numerous privileges but also numerous obligations before going further let me illustrate privileges and obligations with an example most of you know that my father was a pioneer missionary in north india he left kerala in 1957 he finally after studying at hbi hindustan bible institute he went to kota and after establishing an assembly with three others the late dr m a thomas dr k c john and paul s kant after an assembly was established m a thomas uncle remained in kota and the remaining three people went to three places in north india my dad went to gwalior in madhya pradesh in 1960 he came to gwalior at that time many of these pioneers they had absolutely no financial support so he sent me to a hindi medium school he could not send me to an english he sent me to a hindi medium school but the best hindi medium private school in the town i studied there from first up to 11th standard they had only 11 standards at that time it was the most disciplined school at that time students they were not supposed to go near the staff room there was a physics lab chemistry lab and biology lab in madhya pradesh when it was higher secondary we had to do practicals when we were in 10th and also when in when we were in 11th biology students had to do zoology and botany practicals also chemistry practicals and physics practicals mathematics students they had to do physics and chemistry practicals i was a and we had to choose the subject in ninth so i chose mathematics i did physics practical chemistry practical but the discipline was so tough that when you went close to the physics lab you had to 
take permission before he entered it. Chemistry, so strict that you had to take permission before he entered it. But within chemistry lab, there was a room where chemicals were stored. Absolutely no permission was given to any student to enter it. And then when it comes to principal's room, you, you, you could not simply walk into it. You had to go and ask the man, the, the man who watched the principal's room and explain all the reasons. And if he permitted, you could enter the principal's room. I completed my higher secondary from there as a good student. Then I went on to do my BSc and MSc. And uh, after MSc, for a short period, I went into a job before or jobs before I went back to research. My very first job was in this school where I had taught. And I, I had, I, at, at that time, schools had lower division teacher, upper division teacher, and lecturers. Since I was going to be in charge of the physics laboratory, I was made a school lecturer. The first day I went to my school, please remember, here is a school where I studied. I was afraid to enter the physics lab without permission, chemistry lab without permission. The staff room, we were not supposed to go near it. Prin principal's room, I had to seek permission of the manager who would sit in front of the room. And the first day I went to the school, I was terrified. Principal's room. I was terrified of the staff room. I was terrified of the physics lab, terrified of the chemistry lab. And then I said, hey, man, now you are not a student. You are a lecturer. And that physics lab is now under your control. My new status had changed my access to everything. So I went to that room. All these years, I was afraid to enter that room. That day I entered the room, I sat on the chair. And I started giving order to the lab boy and lab assistant and everybody. When it was recess, the staff room, which I was so afraid of, I entered the staff room boldly and sat with other teachers and had tea. Many of them were my own teachers. And in the evening, when I had a free period, I simply walked straight into the principal's room. I did not have to ask permission from that guy who was sitting in front of his room. I went straight to the room. I had a nice chat with the principal. Do you see the difference? But when on the first day, when I went there, I was so terrified to see the principal's room, staff room, physics lab, chemistry lab. On the second day, I entered the chemistry lab. I did not need anybody's permission. And even the room where chemicals are stored, where students were never allowed to enter, I did not need anybody's permission. My new status had given me access to all these places with a confidence and now I did not need anybody's permission. In our spiritual life, when God justifies us, He makes us totally new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anybody is Christ, is in Christ, is a new creation. So we have been made a new creation. We have been given access to the very God himself. We don't need any priest anymore. We don't need, we directly represent ourselves to God. In the Old Testament, people were represented by priests in front of God. In New Testament, no, we directly have access. In the Old Testament, they did not address God as God the way we address him. We address him as father. That's a particularly New Testament form of addressing God. 
why are why do we address god as father our status has been changed we have been made not only sons and sons and daughters of god we are justified so what what are the implications of justification number one implication is we have total freedom to act to get access to god the creator this doctrine when it is taught it leads to total freedom in spiritual life please remember teaching of justification number one justification gives us access to god so the moment we understand the doctrine of justification we realize that now we have direct access to god number two when we understand justification it leads to enormous freedom in our spiritual life let me illustrate it this way all human man made religions they teach work based salvation and a person has to work like a slave all his life laboring 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 but he never has any confidence have i got forgiveness no confidence justification forget it even the confidence of forgiveness is not there let alone justification but when the doctrine biblical doctrine of justification is taught for the first time people understand that wow i have freedom so teaching of justification always leads to spiritual freedom and please remember since an understanding of justification leads to freedom many many people would like to suppress that doctrine completely suppress that doctrine and that happened in history let me tell you whenever the doctrine of justification is taught it leads to freedom and whenever justification the doctrine of justification is suppressed it leads to slavery you have to be a slave to the pastor you have to be a slave to the priest you have to be a slave to church hierarchy has it ever happened in christendom the answer is yes in christendom right from the beginning people who are in leadership they have always preferred to suppress this doctrine the doctrine of justification by faith and the biggest suppression came in 3rd century around 350 ad approximately around 350 ad around 350 ad an emperor by the name of constantine a roman emperor by the name of constantine suddenly converted into christianity please remember i did not say he was saved he was not saved he just had a conversion conversion of religion till yesterday he was a roman a adherent of the roman religion and today suddenly he says i am an adherent of christianity he ordered all the roman priests to become either christian priests or face death so overnight all the roman priests the pagans they become christian priests and please remember there is nothing like justification by faith in pagan religions and therefore when these pagans became christian priests the first thing they suppressed was the doctrine of justification by faith also i want to remind you that within christendom there is a group known as roman catholic church catholic means universal 
instead of saying them instead of using the name catholic church why do they use the name roman catholic church because the roman catholic church was born from constantine and his roman priests who suddenly became christians there was a big fight for authority and gradually roman catholic church took control of christianity almost everywhere in the world except the eastern orthodox people and the first thing roman catholic church did was hide and suppress the doctrine of justification by faith introduce a lot of man made rituals and tell people that you have to undergo all these rituals if you want to be saved if you want to be justified and the amount of exploitation that took place for almost uh, 1000 yeah almost 1200 years is unbelievable just unbelievable most of you do not have a history uh, an idea of church history some of it i will mention now but for almost 1200 years christians were suppressed in the name of roman catholic church where the doctrine of justification by faith was rigorously and vigorously suppressed why was it suppressed there is a reason the moment a believer is told that you are justified by faith he starts enjoying freedom but the priestly class has always believed in exploit and lead a comfortable life in the christian community also please remember in the christian community also the priestly class has always enjoyed suppressing and exploiting people the 21st century is the first time when governments have started interfering openly into church matters and now many many priests are in jail on charges of rape till about 20 years ago they could escape using their priestly privilege but no more many priests are in jail because they were thieves and i want to tell you in the coming days many many more priests from almost all christian churches they will go into jails even some brethren evangelists they were in jails because they were criminals why the priestly class has always liked to lead a luxurious life and to lead a luxurious life you have to enslave people you have to make them your slaves and to make them slaves the first thing you have to do is suppress fundamental doctrines like justification by faith convince them that their salvation and justification depends upon you convince them that after your salvation you need a second you need a, a lot of sacraments which can be administered only by priests in congregational churches convince them that after salvation you have to wait you have to tarry you have to get a second blessing and convince them that only a pastor can can behave or pastor can work as an intermediary who brings second blessing to you most of the people who are attending classes today are brethren and i want to tell you we brethren are now not far behind these people the very fact that justification by faith is not being taught in brethren assemblies shows that we want to suppress it in the last 26 years that i have been in kerala i have heard a message on justification by faith only once and even that was 
presented in such a quick manner that I had forgotten. And my wife had to remind that, yes, perhaps there was one lecture that we heard in 26 years. Yes, maybe we heard, but I don't remember it. It was taught in such a feeble manner. Brothers and sisters, the very fact that the most fundamental doctrine is no longer taught in Brethren Assembly shows that, number one, somehow or other, those who lead, they now prefer to enslave. And therefore, they are not teaching fundamental doctrines, they are hiding it. And of all the doctrines, justification by faith is the most important because it brings total freedom in our spiritual lives. Today, there are many in brethren assemblies who, who teach this way. Listen, brother, you have to accept Lord Jesus as your personal savior. But once you accept him as your personal savior, your salvation is not complete. For your salvation to be complete, you have to do this, 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 this. And when you do all these things, then only you stand in front of God as a person who is justified. That is suppression. Not teaching is suppression. And then teaching error is also suppression of the doctrine of justification by faith. So today, when we discuss the implications of this doctrine, let me remind you, number one, the greatest implication of this doctrine is free access to God. Today, we don't need any priest. We do not need any intermediary. In the Old Testament, Israelites, born again Israelites could approach God only through an intermediary. Today, we don't need that. We have been given direct access to God. That's why in church age, God abolished the priestly class and made each and every believer a priest. I want to remind you, my dear brothers and sisters, every person listening to this message who is a born again believer is a priest or a priestess. Today, instead of a priest representing us to God, we justified people as priests and priestesses approach God directly, address him as father, share all our burdens to him and plead with him for his grace and his compassion. That's the first implication. Number two, teaching of justification leads to much freedom in church. We know that among Reformation movements, the most reformed one is the Brethren movement. A very similar one, which had almost similar doctrines, is what is known as local churches in Kerala. Though a large faction of that church has now gone back to things they abandoned. But here and there, there are groups within that, which is made up of a remnant. These are groups which represent the highest form of reformation, where doctrine of justification by faith rules the day. And since we are all justified by faith, Believers are given enormous freedom. In these congregational churches, believers are given freedom to preach. Now, I come from a church, Kalamashiri Church, where some seven or eight different brothers, they share the pulpit. Among those who share the pulpit these days, only one is an evangelist, that's me. I mean, I'm talking about those who are permanently members of this assembly. Visiting evangelists do share, I'm not talking about them. Of permanent members, if eight of us are in the panel of speakers, seven of them are not evangelists. Why are they given the freedom to teach? Because... 
my home church recognizes that each believer is a believer priest and therefore no intermediary priest class is needed many sisters in my assembly are very capable bible teachers and they are very active in a fellowship here in ernakulam area some 40 churches are linked in that way known as christian sisters fellowship many many sisters from my church they are very active in teaching in christian sisters fellowship there is bible exposition there is exhortation there is devotion because brethren assemblies appreciate the fact that god has made each one of us a priest and therefore as a justified person who has direct access to god there is no priestly class every believer who has received the light from god has the privilege of sharing it there is only one restriction women are not supposed to teach men and therefore our church doesn't allow women to teach from church pulpit when men are present but women are encouraged to teach other women women are also encouraged to teach in sunday school so please remember teaching of justification leads to freedom you go to an episcopalian church a denominational church people are not given freedom they cannot go and tell the oversight of the church that uh, i would like to present a series on such and such subject no but congregational churches openly teach justification which leads to so many implications that the freedom of individual believers as priests is uh, understood it is appreciated and as, as a part of the freedom given to them by god they are given the freedom to teach men are given the freedom to teach teach everyone and women are given the freedom to teach women and also children all bible doctrines have practical implications and doctrine of justification by faith has enormous practical implications and now let me tell you something 500 and approximately 550 years ago a roman catholic monk a sannyasi he was not satisfied by the way things were going on in his church he was an expert in original languages so he kept on reading kept on reading and his focus was on romans one fine day as he was reading romans he came to romans chapter 5 verse 1 therefore being justified by faith and lo suddenly the spirit worked in his hand and he understood that no none of these sacraments no not priests it is faith which leads us to justification that was martin luther the father of protestant reformation he protested against all the evils in the roman catholic church he had to face enormous consequences but he stood faithful to his call and he started preaching the doctrine of justification by faith he was not alone there were a number of others who had come to the same conclusion but they had no freedom because roman catholic church has very rigorously suppressed freedom to teach the bible you had to have a seminary degree you had to have ordination and you also had to have license before you could teach the bible so many people knew this doctrine they kept silent but the day martin luther brought freedom all of them rose and they started teaching justification by faith salvation by grace through faith and people in 
thousands started accepting Lord Jesus as their savior. They protested against the evils of the Roman Catholic Church. That is why they are known as Protestants. Once Protestant movement was born, there was rigorous suppression of people. Roman Catholic Church had not only ecclesiastical or church authority, they also had political authority. And my dear brothers and sisters, unfortunately, these things are not taught today because many of our people who know these truths, they are afraid to teach because if they teach, maybe they cannot go and plead to the Roman Catholic priest in their neighborhood to get an admission to their children in their school. So many practical things are there. We are afraid to teach, but I want to tell you, you should read at least a summary of the Protestant Reformation. Tens of thousands of Christians were brutalized. They were made slaves. Dozens upon dozens, countless dozens of Protestants were burned. Burnt alive, not after they died. They were burnt alive. And the system was bind them to an iron pole, surround them with wood, set fire, and the living man or woman gradually cooks, cooks and dies. Hundreds were killed and murdered. In fact, the torture was so much that everybody who is listening to me today should read and it's easily available what is known as Fox's Book of Martyrs, F-O-X-E. Fox wrote his book in seven volumes and that includes torture from the first century onwards. But reading seven volumes is a massive job. A one volume Fox's Book of Martyrs is available. Don't buy the latest versions which don't have pictures. You should buy Fox's Book of Martyrs, which is illustrated. That will tell you the amount of torture, the amount of brutality, the amount of murders that took place, but people were willing to die because for the first time they understood that they are free in Christ and they don't have to be dependent upon priests for their salvation. Uh, some of these uh, stories with illustration are also available in a Malayalam book. The book is no longer available. Uh, the title is Rekshaganum Raktasachigalum. Uh, that was authored by my wife, but the book is sold out and copies are not available. Let's hope and pray that it would become available in Malayalam. Also, in English, Fox's Book of Martyrs is available. Please try to get a copy and read. Thousands upon thousands of people chose to die rather than go back into slavery of the Roman Catholic Church. Do you know why? Man yearns for freedom. And the doctrine of justification by faith brought freedom. And over the years, thousands upon thousands of people in India also followed the same path. Hundred and approximately 125 years ago, when the Brethren movement took shape in India, hundreds of people were kicked out of their homes. Hundreds. I will be covering Brethren Church History in brief in uh, Lord Billing in one of the classes. But let me just add quickly that I know the history firsthand because my great grandfather was one such person. He was kicked out of his home. He went and settled somewhere. And when his wife died, 
the brethren did not have a burial place and therefore my great grandmother was buried in our own property behind our house by that time my great grandpa had a, a, a piece of land and a small house and great grandma was buried behind that house in our own property not in a cemetery but my great grandpa was only one person hundreds upon hundreds of people particularly in kerala suffered because once they knew this doctrine they stood for the doctrine they said we don't want slavery of the priesthood we want freedom that is given by the holy spirit so justification by faith is no ordinary doctrine it is that doctrine which brings spiritual freedom to us which gives us access to god unlike the man in the story mentioned by lord jesus who was in the banquet house without proper clothing it's god the holy spirit himself who clothes us in the righteousness of christ it's not we who clothe ourselves like that man we cannot say no 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 i don't want this cloth i'll go in my dirty clothes no not at all it's a holy spirit which covers us in the righteousness of christ and because we are covered in the righteousness of christ god looks at us and he does not view us as forgiven sinners he views us as people covered in the righteousness of christ and since we are covered in the righteousness of christ we have direct access to god we don't need any priestly class in between us and god tonight when you kneel in god's presence please remember this fact that you and i have direct access to god only and only because we are justified in christ we should be deeply thankful for that we should also understand that in the new testament era god has made us free from the tyranny of the priesthood you may say brother in the old testament priesthood was established by god was there any tyranny there oh yes even in old testament where god dealt directly with priests the priestly class did indulge in oppression do you remember the sons of the high priest eli many of you pronounce the name as eli the high priest eli because their father was high priest the sons were forcing women who were working at the door of tabernacle to indulge in immorality with these young men that means the position belongs to the father but priestly clan or please priestly class has so much so much of a grip over people that priests sons were indulging in immorality and also they were looting people i hope you remember the whole story and so enraged was god that he told samuel what's going to happen to the family of eli those who hear not those who see those who hear their ears will tingle i'm sure that many of you have suddenly experienced the bomb blasting at the time of festivals deepavali and christmas some of them are so powerful that once they blast for a few minutes your ears tingle that's what god told eli through samuel those who hear what is going to happen to your family they shall have their ears tingle that is the level of oppression in which the priesthood class indulges whether it is the old testament or whether it is the new testament and that is the reason why the priestly class loves to suppress the doctrine of justification by faith that is another reason why even many of our people are now suppressing that doctrine in closing let me remind you once again 
teaching of any and every doctrine even theology proper should lead to practical application and since we are not doing that doctrine is becoming boring to people and i close once again with an apology that when i taught the doctrine of trinity i did not go into practical applications lord willing i'll come to that and in every fundamental doctrines i'll try my best to very clearly mention the practical aspects god bless all of you very soon the malayalam and english books which dr sanishchurian and i authored on justification by faith about 20 years ago it's being revised and we will revise and we will release it very soon god bless you dear friends i am confident that you enjoyed listening to this question answer video by dr johnson c philip he would love to get your questions please post your questions in the comment box below this video and he will prepare a video reply for you please post only one question at a time and make it as detailed as possible so that dr philip has no problem in understanding exactly what you mean also please encourage this ministry by subscribing to this channel below this video there is a subscribe button please click it also please click the bell icon near it to complete the process of subscribing thank you very much for being such an encouragement to our channel